So we've factored a lot of different ways, right? We had common factors. We've talked about um, quadratic trinomials. We've talked about uh, factoring those special cases. We're going to talk, there's one other type of factoring you need to know, and that is factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping, we use it whenever you're going to factor something that has four terms. So whenever you see something with four terms, we're thinking factoring by grouping. So it's pretty easy to identify. And we'll talk about how with this next example right here. So, okay. So if I have a problem like this, I'm going to look at this A right here. And the first thing I recognize is that there are four terms, right? I've got the x cubed, 3x squared, 2x plus 6. So what we do with factoring by grouping is you still check for a common factor between all four, which there isn't one. So instead of looking at all four after that, I just look at the, I group them together. I group the first two and the last two together. There's still going to be a plus in between. And then I'm checking for a common factor between those two smaller groups. So instead of looking at all four, just looking at these first two, they have a common factor, right? They both have an x squared. So I'm going to factor out an x squared. And if I do, that leaves me with an x plus 3. This is just taking out a common factor. Plus... Okay, and look at those next two. The 2x plus 6 has a common factor of 2. So factor out a 2, and I'm left with x plus 3. Okay, this next step is important. Now, now instead of having four terms, I have x squared times x plus 3. I have that first term, and I have 2 times x plus 3. I have that second term. Between those two, between those two terms now, we do have a common factor, and that's the x plus 3. Remember, factors are things that are multiplied together. And I've got an x squared times x plus 3 and a 2 times x plus 3. So what we're going to do next is just take out that common factor of x plus 3. So it's going to come out of both of them. All right, we're going to take it out, and it goes out in front just like we would with a common. So that common factor of x plus 3 just comes out here in front. Then we put what's left. Right? If I take the x plus 3 out of that first term, I'm left with just an x squared. I take the x plus 3 out of the second term, I'm left with a plus 2. Okay, now how do we know that we did it correctly? Well, if we factored it correctly, when I multiply it, th this is my answer, right? This is my factored form. But if I did it correctly, I, if I multiply it out, I should end up with what I started again. So let's just double check. Uh, x times x squared is x cubed. Uh, 2x, 3x squared, plus 6. Okay. And that is what I started with. So we factored it correctly. So here's my answer x plus 3 times x squared plus 2. Usually if we're going to get, we're going to get, um, you know, if, if we get mixed up here, usually it's with this step right here uh, where we're taking the x plus 3 out of both of them. Okay, sometimes we have a hard time recognizing that. Um, but it's just like a common factor. Here's an example. If, you know, if I had x squared y plus 2y, right, if I take the common factor of y out, it'd leave me with x squared plus 2. Well, this is really what we just did right here, but instead of taking a y out, we took this x plus 3 out and this x plus 3 out. All right, let's try another one. I'm going to go down to this next, actually, I'm going to skip past those two and come down to this one. So let's do this one together, and then I'll have you try one on your own. So again, check for a common factor between all four terms, and in this case, there's not one. So again, we're going to try grouping, and the reason why we're doing grouping is because it's got four terms, okay? That's how I know it's grouping. Okay, so I put the first two together, and I look for a common factor, and I put the last two together and look for a common factor. So 9n cubed and 15n squared, I could take out a, whoops, sorry about that. I could take out a 3n squared. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and I took out two of the n's. 15 divided by 3 is 5. I took out the two n's. Uh, 6n minus 10, I could take out a 2. That would leave me a 3 and minus 5 also. What you may have noticed on this one and the last one is for this to work, these parentheses right here, the 3 and minus 5, has to be the same. If it's not the same, then it won't work. But it is, so it does work. So we're going to take the 3 and minus 5 and put it out in front, 3 and minus 5. Okay, and then once we take those out, that leaves me with 3n squared plus 2. And those are just times together. So it's 3n minus 5 times 3n squared plus 2, and there's my factored form. Okay, I want you guys to try one. So I'm going to give you one right here. Uh, go ahead and write it down. Give it a try. 
uh, pause the video while you're doing that and then come back and we'll check it together. So we're going to take the, oh, you know what? Uh, when you tried this one, it may have been a little confusing because of this minus right here. I realized that after we paused the video. Um, so if you got it, that's awesome. If not, go through this one with me here and I'll kind of try to show you because it is a little bit different because of the minus in the middle. Okay, so there is not a common factor between all four, but when I go to group, this is what you have to be careful with. I have 64a cubed minus 24a squared. This is where you got to be careful. If I put the minus here, this is actually, I'm going to do it the wrong way. I see this a lot, and that's incorrect. See if you can figure out why it's incorrect. Hopefully you recognize that that minus applies to both of them. So that would be minus 24a, but it would also be a minus 9, and it's supposed to be a plus 9. So you got to be careful with this. When there's a minus in the middle, what I find is helpful is to do this, is to always put a plus and leave the minus with the 24a. Okay, now take out your common factor between 64 and 24. I think we've got an 8. And we have a squared, so 8, 64 divided by 8 is 8, took out two of the a's, 24 divided by a is 3. Okay, and this is what, this is what we got to be careful with this. If this first term is negative, we talked about this when we did common factors. If the first term is negative, it's easier to take the negative out. Uh, between 24 and 9, uh, we've got 3, right? But I'm going to take out a negative 3. Now when I divide by, that, I'm dividing by negative 3, that's going to flip both the signs. Uh, if I'm adding a negative, that is the same thing as just subtracting. So we can just change that to a minus. So that's a little bit tricky just because if their minus is there, still put a plus. There's going to be a negative there, but you're going to factor out a negative. Okay, when I look right there, for this to work again, I've got to have those have to match up, which they do. So I take that out of both of them. The 8a minus 3 goes out in front, and then I put what's left. That leaves me with an 8a squared minus 3. And if you want to check your answer, you just multiply it back out and, and double check. So if you got that on your own, that's awesome. Again, I'm sorry I gave you that example to try on your own where we hadn't practiced it uh, with a minus in the middle there. Um, here's another one. This one has a minus in the middle also, but now we've done an example. Why don't you try this one uh, and then you know pause the video and try it and then come back. Okay, so I'm going to group those first two together. And then I'm always going to put a plus there. Put the minus with the 35. Okay, take out your common factor between 20 and 12. I believe it's 4, and we got an x squared. That would leave me a 5x plus 12 divided by 4 is 3. Um, 35 and 21, I think it's 7. But because that first term is negative, I'm going to take out a negative 7. So instead of being a plus, it's going to become a minus 7. And it'd be positive 5x plus 3. Again, you divide them both by a negative 7. Okay, again, what you're looking for is that those two match up, 5x plus 3 and 5x plus 3. I'll factor it out, and that leaves me with 4x squared minus 7. And we're done. Factoring by grouping is nice because you just repeat the same steps. So as long as you've got those steps down, you're going to get it every time. But that's really all there is to it. Like Those, those are... Um, those, that's the process. So you check for a common factor between all four terms. If there's not one, just group the first two and the last two terms together and then look for your common factor. And just remember, this the, 5X, the parentheses have to end up being the same thing. You take that out of both. That's what goes out in front. And then I'll do lots of colors here. And then whatever is left over, right, the 4x squared and the minus 7, that's what ends up in that second set of parentheses right there. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let me know if you have questions. Good luck.